everyone, this is Craig, here to talk about masking today in Photoshop. So I have a, a fruit, botanically speaking I guess it's a fruit, I have a green pepper up today. Um, so you have yours on your screen and we're going to drop the background and the best way that I've found to do this is to just start with the pen tool. So I touch P with the pen tool and what I'm going to do is zoom in and if you will see there is a little bit of a blur in between the background and the green. I want to split that blur by clicking and creating a path along that blur. As I go along here I'm holding the space bar down to get my hand, the grabber hand, to move that along. So I'm just again splitting the blur as best I can. If I come across a point that I want to move, let's just say I put one too high, I can use my arrow keys to move that around, dial it in per pixel, or I can hold down my command key and direct select and move it as well. I tend to like the nuances of the um, arrow keys. So I'm going to continue around this pepper. Let me do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm just wrapping up and bringing my final point around here. As I come around you will see when I hover over the point that is my starting point, the little circle pops up over my pen tool. I will click once there. I won't drag, so I have a clean edge here, a clean corner point, and it completes the path. So if I zoom out, you will see that I have created a path all the way around. This path is the same as drawing with a pen tool in Illustrator. Um, so we use it a little bit in Photoshop, and I like to use it in Photoshop to mask. Uh, I know there are other options. You can use um, your lasso and your marquee and all your other tools up here to a magic wand sometimes works if there's a lot of contrast between your object and the background. It gets a little dicey down here if you try to use the magic wand uh, and where these have this, a similar value. So for me, I like to just use the pen tool. So what I will do next is look over here in the paths. I'm over here. Um, the paths, you'll see this is a work path over here the work path will stay with the file if I double click this and I name it. So I'll name it pepper path, whatever you want. Notice that it changed it from italics, from italics to um, just regular type and I know that that will remain with the file now as long as I want it to. So I'll jump back to my layers palette. Now that I have my path created I will use my quick key command return and that will turn my path into marching ants or a selection. And it's a nice clean selection. Notice if I go back into my paths palette, it's still there. The pepper path is still there. So back to my layers on this, I have a couple of options now. Um, I could simply inverse this selection and type delete, and that would be destructive. So I would just delete the background and it would be gone. Um, in the, the real working world, I like to do this, so if someone else ever grabs your file, it, there isn't a possibility of them opening it up and uh, including the background in a catalog or in a piece of packaging that they do. So in that case, I actually prefer the, the destructive method. Um, so, But if you don't want to do that, you can create a layer mask, and that is right down here at the bottom. Um, make the cursor large down here. I can simply click on that and it will put a layer mask around that selection, drop the background, and it's, it's nice and clean. Now I'm going to uh, Command Z, go back, um, so I put the background back in because one thing that I'd like to do is remember that when we, we made our path, we split the blur here. Well, I'd like to retain part of that blur. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to feather the edge before I apply the layer mask to it. So I'm going to go up under Select and down to Modify to Feather. 
I'm simply going to feather, this is a high res file, about 300 pixels per inch. So, well not about, it is 300 pixels per inch. I'm going to feather it two pixels. And I'm going to click OK. You don't really see that anything happened. If you have tight corners, you might see that they rounded just a little bit. Um, but now as I zoom out, I will apply that layer mask by again, down here, clicking. And when I look at this closely now, you will see that there is a little blur left in there to help my pepper transition into the background. So if I go to my layers palette and I create a new layer, pull it behind it, and I'm going to grab a color. Um, I'll grab a color that kind of, this orange looks good. I will quick fill the background or the quick fill that layer with option delete. Remember your quick keys option delete will fill it with the foreground color. Command delete will fill it with the background color. So command delete would do white. Option delete on that layer would do my foreground color, which is the orange. So now as I come in here, zoom in, you can see that that little bit of two pixel blur transitions the green and the pepper nicely into the background, that orange. And there isn't a real harsh line around there. Most things in life aren't a harsh line. Um, there isn't really any lines in nature. It's just shapes that form and blend into each other. So that's what we're trying to mimic here. So we have a really nice clean path. And from here, I still have, um, this was a non-destructive, if you remember, non-destructive method where I still have my layer style. Um, I can click that layer style with command click on the layer and, uh, or on the, uh, the layer mask, excuse me. I can click on there and get my selection back if I choose to. Sometimes you have to go back and tweak it a little bit. Um, you can also go back to your path if you want and you can tweak that a little bit as well. Um, if I go back into my pen tool and select that in my selection tool, I can go back into this path and edit these and then go back through the same process where I use my command return to turn it into a selection and then feather it, those two pixels because it's high res, and then put the layer mask back on. So that's masking. This is a dropping the background. This is used quite a bit in packaging um, where you take your own photographs. I have my students uh, where I teach take their own photographs of fruit. Uh, we build packaging from that. It could be coffee beans, green peppers, fruits, vegetables, foods, all different types of things. Drop the background from the photograph and then they can use this as an asset to design packaging, brochures, websites, whatever they want. And you have a nice clean file. Thank you very much. This is Craig Koontz.